For those that are wondering, just like, hey, we would love to participate in, a, in that gift. You're welcome to give um, in your ordinary giving. It just give them a line to say we'd love to bless the pastors and the staff of this church and, uh, and just let them know that we love and support them. I'm so grateful for all who serve here. And I'm grateful for, I'm just equally grateful for every person who comes, the family who comes. And I, we've been a whole, you know, for some of us, we'll finish 17 years in February, Connie and I. And uh, some of our staff are, are long and some are, are serving shorter, but it is a joy and a privilege uh, to serve this church, to serve Christ the King. Jesus is the Lord of Life Church 7. This church actually belongs fully to him. He bought it with his own blood. Every once in a while, I have somebody come and say, you know, I know you're in charge of the church, and I get this big sigh of relief. I go, actually, I'm not. <laughs> He's in charge of his church. And I've been placed as an, as an under-shepherd to Christ, but that just means that I'm, we're serving you, and that is our heart to continue to serve. Thank you for your kindness, your gifts, and generosity. So good. We're beginning a series this month uh, that is called, His Name Shall Be Called Wonder. His Name Shall Be Called Wonder. And um, wonder, is, wonder is super important. I, I, um, it, it's really, it's a significant loss when you lose the loss of wonder. And I, I think the thing that makes like a 20-year-old an old person is that they have no wonder. And I think what makes an 80-year-old amazing is that they're filled with wonder. Amen. You can be 15 years old and if you have no wonder, you appear very old and no fun. So the older I get, the more filled with God's wonder I want to become. So that people go like, man, I'll bet you he's only 50. <laughs> That's quite a dream there. But uh, wonder is always associated with beauty. When I see something majestic and beautiful, my soul fills with wonder. Mount Rainier, once a year, I try to get up to Mount Rainier. We go up White Pass, and as we're traveling up White Pass, we'll be going along, and you'll come around a corner, and on a clear day, all of a sudden, Mount Rainier, in its one full sight of it, will show up with all of its snow and all of its beauty, and you drive around the corner and you go, wow, that is amazing. That is so majestic. And the whole two hours before driving up there all becomes worth it in one moment. When you look at this mountain and your heart is moved with the majesty of God's creation. That's wonderful. You go through the winter and, and the summer and I don't spend hardly any time thinking about Mount Rainier at all. But when it comes to the summertime I'm thinking, we need to take another trip up to Mount Rainier, Mount Rainier, not to go up there to have lunch, though lunch is fun, and not, and not to go get a good hike, though you can hike yourself right into the grave. <laughs> but the reason I go to Mount Rainier is to be struck with the wonder of God's creation. I want to, today I'm going to talk about how to cultivate, how to strengthen wonder. And I'm also going to help us free our hearts from the common and the ordinary. Another wonder that we have close to us is the Grand Coulee Dam. And before 9-11, you used to be able to go out on the, um, over on the road that was on top of the mountain. And when they had all the spill, they would have all the spillways open and you could go up and you could lean over and you could just watch the water come over the falls of Grand Coulee Dam. And it was going, 
and underneath you, and your whole body is shaking, and you're going, wow, that is incredible. And no one that I saw walking on the, on the road up there seemed bored. No one looking over, we're, we're yawning, and go, I don't know how many tons of water per second are going over, but it has such wonder to it. So much wonder was lost sitting for two years in homes with masks on, wondering, adjective, when we're gonna go out. And I think we're in a season to recapture the wonder that we're designed to carry. The wonder of who God made us to be. The wonder of who God is. And so today, it is my hope, in the balcony, I want you to go out not wondering, but I want you to go out filled with wonder. Amen? Amen. And that's for the rest of you too. (laughs) This month we celebrate the birth of the Christ child. December is designed to be a month filled with wonder. Salvation has come to humanity. Say amen. Amen. A savior is born. Joy to the world. Jesus has come. Instead of December being a month of darkness, heaviness, and anxiety, it's designed to be a month of wonder, celebration, beauty, and joy. If you have the wrong beliefs about the season of the year, you will prepare yourself to endure rather than to celebrate. But if you put wonder in the right place with right beliefs, you can open up your heart and mind and every season will be your favorite season. What's what's my favorite season? Right now, it's winter. It's full with wonder. I'm looking forward to grandkids, looking forward to families, all month long, looking forward to celebrate the birth of Jesus. I want my heart, I want my life to be filled with wonder during this month. I don't wanna be suffering from anxiety. I don't wanna be depressed. I don't wanna be feeling like, well, this is lost. Or I don't wanna wake up in the morning because it is dark out, and I wanna go, go to bed, it is dark out. I wa- don't wanna wake up and look around and go, man, it's dark out, I feel so depressed. I wanna wake up and go, wow, God is actually inhabits the darkness. There's wonder in darkness. I just refuse to allow the season. Some people, every in different seasons, have a belief system believing for allergies. Well, it's spring and here they come. Or it's summer and here come my allergies. Or it's the winter time, I'm gonna get my cold. It's like a belief system. You say, well, that's because I've had it before, but why not let the wonder and the health and the wonder and the goodness of God change your season this year? Why not expect health and life and strength and blessing? Why not have God restore wonder to each one of our lives? When I married my wife 44 years ago, standing there looking at her, and I could see all kinds of wonder. Beautiful wife. I think we, they sang seven songs. We didn't have regular worship service. I wake up today and I still see wonder in my wife Connie. Most unhealthy marriages have a profound loss of wonder. They've learned to get along but they haven't been able to see the beauty and celebrate the goodness of God and the grace of God in their spouse. What a, what a tragedy. So this month, marriage, for everyone who's married, stand up. If you're married and your spouse is next to you, stand up. Look at them, take their hands. Yeah, yeah, this is like a marriage refresher. Take their hands, look at one another. Look each other in the eyes. You're not looking at me anymore. Look at each other in the eyes and say, wonder. I see wonder in you. (laughs) Woo! Some of you are kissing each other. Come on. That's wonderful. All right, good. You can figure out the rest of it later on. It's awesome. 
That's awesome. Man, I, I just want to promote marriage. Sex is, sex is designed for marriage. I didn't say this in the first service. Sex is wonderful inside the confines of marriage. It was God's big idea. So if you view sex as dirty, you've lost the wonder of sex. But it's only for marriage. Young people say only for marriage. Yeah, come on. It's worth the wait. Yeah, don't let anybody cheat you. Come on. <laughs> okay, that's my sex talk. So here we go. <sighs> Maybe I need to stay there a little bit longer. I think what you fail to celebrate and talk about, you lose its wonder. And for too long, hundreds of years in the church, we've been afraid of the word sex. You know, love doing it, just don't want to talk about it. You know, isn't that true? I mean, I can literally feel the discomfort right now. And the sad part is, is there's such a loss when that takes place. And it's not like an advertisement agency like, hey, this month, blah, 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 blah. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying there needs to be a celebration of union and, and sex and the enjoyment in the confines of marriage and that beauty that restores, there's a part of that that restores wonder. I don't have time. I, I have a whole bunch of things flooding into my mind right now. And uh, so I'm going to use my amygdala and move on. Today, we begin this new series, His Name Shall Be Called Wonderful. 700 years before the birth of Christ, Isaiah the prophet prophesied of the coming Messiah to all Israel and uh, Israel looking on. And, and in Isaiah 9, 6, 9, chapter 6, 9, Chapter nine, verse six and seven, it says this. For unto us a child is born, and I'd like you just to stand with me and just repeat this with me. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders. How many will say hallelujah for that day? Yeah. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I'll repeat this with me. Of, his, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it in order it and establish it, it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forevermore. And we'll all repeat this last part. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Would you lift your hands with me? And let's just invite the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, I am a candidate for a fresh wonder of you. Yeah, we just lift our hands. We just say, Lord, we're candidates for the wonder of God. Yeah, every area that we've had loss, Area, Father, areas in our hearts, Father, in our lives where we experience dullness and boredom and indifference and lack. Lord, we just lift our hands and we want to come into full wonder of you. Because when we do, everything begins to get restored. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah prophesied. He shall be called, Jesus shall be called wonderful. The word wonderful translated from the Hebrew word pela, and it is most often translated wonder rather than wonderful. Wonderful is an adjective. It means inspiring, delightful, pleasure of admiration, extremely good, marvelous. Let's say wonderful. wonderful. If you're gonna say that in German, it's ausgezeichnet. <laughs> or excellent. Wonder is a noun or a verb also, though. 
And actually in this text, it probably, I'm not saying for sure, but it probably should have been translated as a noun rather than an adjective. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But as a verb, the word wonder is a desire to be curious or to know something. And very often you'll find yourself saying, I wonder about that. That's wonder as a verb. Wonder used as a noun, he shall be called wonder. Wonder is extraordinary, hard to fully grasp or understand. Mystery. Wonder is God's acts, judgments, and redemption. The wonder of God. There's so much wonder in God that you go back and forth, noun and verb. You wonder, and then wonder comes. Worship connects us to wonder. If there's a loss of wonder in my connection with God, I will run the risk of making that which is holy common and sadly making that which is common holy. It's easy to confuse religious activity with worship. Worship is the overflow of fellowship and intimacy with Christ. Religious activity turns delight, fellowship, koinonia into Duty, hard work. It's important not to replace the invitation of the first command that Jesus gave in Matthew 22 to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, with Christ's second command of loving my neighbor as myself. The first command empowers me to do Christ's second command. And here's how it works. I have no problem almost ever of loving God. Lord, I love you with all my heart. Yeah, just close your eyes and lift your hands where you're seated. Jesus, I love you with all my heart. Woo! With all my soul. With all my mind. Come on, enter in with me. Yeah, I, I'm just going to show you. So I love you, Jesus, with all my soul. With all my mind. Oh, Jesus, you are amazing. Oh, you're full of wonder. Love you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, all my strength. And now, to love my neighbor as myself. From that formation, um, what I do, is like, no problem. That person, we've got difficulty with things that are going on, but because of the love of the Father, because of his grace in me, now I have the capacity to love them as Christ would love them. So this happens to me often. I know it doesn't happen to anyone here. I run into someone who's hard to love. I'm gonna have anybody raise your hand about people that you know that are hard to love. But I run into somebody that's harder for me to love and I need to love them. But I don't obey the second commandment from rote. I go back to the first commandment. And I get filled back up with God's love and his kind, Lord I love you with all my heart, with all my soul, all my mind. Shout out, we're just praying the spirit. I bless you, Jesus, I worship you. And then I see this person, and then I begin to see the love of Christ begins to flow through me to love them well. You're not designed to love somebody who's not very lovable on your own or out of hard work. Because then you live, honestly, you just live in a lot of fantasy. Have you ever had somebody says, hey, I love you, man. They do not. (laughs) Love you, dude. But then I've had people look me in the eyes and say, Pastor West, I love you. Wow, that's so different than love you, dude. And anyone that I've found that hangs out with Jesus a lot and is being wooed by wonder I've found their love very transforming, very gracious. And I'm, I'm encouraging you, like, you may be in a marriage, you're just going like, Pastor Wes, I need more than just to look in somebody's eyes. We need, like, counseling. Years of it. In fact, we're about done. And my response is, good, stop being done. Stop doing what you're doing and get with Jesus by yourself 
and get saturated with the wonder of God and the goodness of God and describe Jesus and get intoxicated with the wonder of Jesus. And then come to your wife or your husband. Go, honey, I love you. And you go back. Because <laughs> for some marriages, it's gonna take a lot of intoxication with Jesus. I am serious. To let the healing balm of Christ begin to restore. Because, and what he'll do over time is he'll give you wonder back in your marriage. And being together is wonderful. <laughs> Squeeze the hand of your wife or husband and go, wonderful. Glad we came. This is like our Friday night date night. <laughs> Woo! Isaiah 6, and I just want to go into Isaiah 6. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Isaiah chapter 6. Is a great example for us to see what happens to a person when they're marked by God's wonder. And it's such a, an amazing passage. This is Isaiah. King Uzziah has died. In verse 1, it reads like this. I w- it was in the year of King Uzziah d- d- that year... It was in the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne and his train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were mighty seraphims, each having six wings, with two wings covering their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And they were calling out to each other, holy, holy, Holy. Revelation chapter four. God shows another facet of himself and they all fall down. Holy. Holy. You can't find wonder in busyness and speed. Holy. Holy, holy is the Lord. The Lord is your friend, but he's not your buddy. When we lose awe and wonder, we lose the ability for holy. Holy, holy earth is full of your glory. Their voices shook the temple up to its foundations and the entire building was filled with smoke. Verse three says, and they were calling to each other, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's army. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Oh, let's do some holy time together. Would you stand with me? You didn't come for a message, did you? Did you, you came for an encounter, right? How many came for an encounter? How many want to encounter? You've heard enough messages. We need some encounters with the Holy One. Yeah, so let's lift our hands and let's do, I think it is, verse three. And they, just say this out loud with me, and they were calling out to each other. Oh, and lift your hands and begin to say, Holy Holy, 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 holy. Oh, Jesus. Is the Lord of heaven's army? The whole earth is filled with his glory. And their voices shook the temple to its foundation and the entire building was filled with smoke. Then I said, it's all over. 
I'm doomed, for I'm a sinful man. I have filthy lips, and I live among people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the king, the Lord of heaven's armies. Then one of the seraphims flew to me with a burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs, and he touched my lips and said, see, the coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed, and your sins are gone. Jesus, the full and complete sacrifice, has come. Wow. Then I heard the Lord saying, whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? I said, here am I, send me. And he said, yes, go and say to this people, listen carefully, but do not understand. Watch closely, but learn nothing. What happens to you when you've lost wonder is that you see, but you don't see. You hear, but you don't hear. That's the danger of losing what's holy. That's the danger of what's losing what's wondrous. That's the danger of making something holy common and something common holy. Then he, said, then he said, Lord, how long will this go on? And he, and he replied, listen to what the Lord says, until their towns are empty, their houses are deserted, and the whole country is a wasteland. Until the Lord has sent everyone away and the entire land of Israel lies deserted. Even the a tenth a remnant survive, it will be invaded again and be burned. But as a tabernacle or oak tree leaves a stump when it is cut down, so Israel's stump will be a holy seed. The, the, much of Israel and Judah had lost their love and wonder for the Almighty. All idolatry along with all kinds of darkness had filled their hearts and the minds of people. Now they are going, preparing, this is just before they go into captivity for 70 years away from this good and spacious land of God's provision. Sin will always take you further than you wanted. Sin will always make a fool out of you. But worse than sin is a loss of wonder. And when you have such a wonder of God, sin really is pretty absent. There's an invitation this morning for the month of, Feb of month of December to engage in the wonder that God has for us. If you are a person who just kind of hates Christmas, you hate this time of the year, then the Lord wants to re restore wonder this morning. If you're a person who's living in sin, today is a day of freedom is to get free of sin. If you're a person here that, that you're really religious, but you're very reluctant for anything of the supernatural, the Lord wants to free you from a religious spirit so that you don't end up like the Israelites doing the, doing the sacrifices and doing all the things, going through the rituals, and, and God said, I don't want your sacrifices. I don't want your offerings. What I want is a humble and a broke and a contrite heart. That's really this call today. I wanna give you five things while you're standing that will bring wonder to you this month. It'll bring wonder to you today. In the New Testament, there are five things. There's way more than five, but I'm just gonna give you five. And I barely have time to give those to you. In fact, I didn't give them in the first service and I had a guy come up afterwards and he asked me for my notes. <laughs> it's true. Let me give you the first one. There is an invitation for all of us this month to experience the wonder of Christ's birth. Luke chapter one, verses 26 through 35. 
Now, I won't read this, but verse 35 says, then the angels replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, Mary, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be what? And he will be called what? Can you see the wonder that's available? The Christ child. Number two, wonder in life. The incarnation, fully man and fully God. Philippians chapter two, verses six and seven says, though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to be cling, cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privilege and he took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, Three, wonder in death and burial. Does the death of Christ on the cross, do you know that there's the wonder of the cross? Do you know that's why we put it back here? The cross used to be covered by the screen. It's a huge cross and every time we would worship without any cross. So that's, then we put the new screen, it was completely covered. And for years I said, 1 Corinthians chapter one says that the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. It's, it is an offense to the Jews, but to those who are being saved, it is the very power of God unto salvation. It's not that I worship this piece of wood, but the cross reminds me I'm stunned by what Jesus did for me. Jesus, what he did cost him his life. It came at the ultimate high price. I'm looking at the cross and I'm reminded of what Jesus paid for Westland Seth. And it causes me to wonder. It causes me to reflect. We used to sing hymns that had wonder in them, but we quit singing them because they lost their wonder because of the way we sang them. They just became ritual. We used to say, when I survey the wondrous cross on which the King of glory died. There's a time when I was younger and I could just feel the glory and the presence of God. And as I got older, it was like, oh no, not another hymn. And are you gonna do all three verses? Am I right? What was happening, we were losing the wonder out of the hymn. So God in his graciousness gave us courses. Now there's new courses. But anybody who goes back and asks the Lord to restore wonder when you're singing those hymns, the wonder will come back. It's glorious. I sing hymns to our staff today. They don't even know what I'm singing about. So I tell them it's a brand new song. Never heard of it before. Pastor Jim's gonna fill in all the gaps next week. The wonder in the resurrection, number four. First Peter 1 Peter 1.3 says, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy, say great mercy, that we have been born again because God raised Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation or great wonder. First Corinthians 5.4 says, he was buried and he was raised from the dead and on the third day, just as the scripture says. And I'm gonna close with this. Number five, wonder in rule and reign, king of kings and lords of lords. And I think, honestly, this piece might be the one that we need the most help with to regain wonder. And the reason is, is I, I see people flinch when they hear Jesus is Lord. People will like the statement, Jesus is Savior, but they flinch when they hear Jesus is Lord. Because Jesus is Lord means that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Savior, that he saved me and transformed me. But when Jesus is Lord, that means that he is the Lord of my life. He is the Lord of glory. And there is such wonder when Jesus becomes Lord. No longer do I live my life 
I am crucified with Christ. No longer I live, but the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who gave his life for me. If you're struggling with sin, make Jesus Lord. If you're struggling with being married, make Jesus Lord. If you're struggling with boredom, make Jesus Lord. If you're, stru if you're struggling with selfishness, if you're struggling with, uh, with uh, addictions, make Jesus Lord. Make Jesus Lord. Make Jesus Lord this morning. Let me read a passage of scripture. It's Colossians chapter one, you could just follow along. Verse 15 says, Christ, oh, yeah, I want you to do it with me. Let's do this together. Verse 15 says, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything and was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. Wonder. Yeah. He made the things we can see. Oh, lift your voice up. And the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, authorities, in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. Say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. He existed before anything else. And he holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who raised from the dead. So he is first in everything. He is Lord. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who once were far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Oh, lift up your voice and repeat this. Yet now, yet now, yet now. oh, really loud, yet now, he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has bought you. He has brought you into his presence. And you are holy. Say, I am holy and blameless. That speaks of awe, doesn't it? As you stand before him without a single fault, <laughs> Woo, thank you, Jesus. But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Life Church 7, don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world. And I, Paul, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. We're gonna take communion. You can go ahead and begin serving. Bring your communion down, we're gonna serve. We'll all take it together. And as we're receiving communion, they're gonna to begin to worship. Let's worship together. Let's ask the Holy Spirit this morning to make the body and the blood of Jesus holy to us, to restore wonder, 
Holy Spirit, I ask and I pray that today.